Hey, how's it going? Alex here from Idea Spot. In today's video, you'll learn how to set up WordPress on DigitalOcean using the Plesk control panel. If you've never used Plesk before, this is what it is. It's a control panel for your web hosting. If you're running your own web hosting, like through a VPS, such as DigitalOcean or Vulture, uh, you can manage everything through this graphical control panel. So you can install WordPress, manage all your files and databases, keep everything up to date and secure. It's done really easily and it's free with the Plesk that you get in DigitalOcean and also Vulture. Okay, now today we are going to be using DigitalOcean, obviously. The other great option for using Plesk is Vulture. Now, both Vulture and DigitalOcean will let you use Plesk for free, and they both have $5 and $6 options. It's always good to spend the extra dollar and go for the $6 thing, just because uh, you get a much more powerful processor. With Vulture, you get a 3.8 gigahertz rather than a 2.4 gigahertz. And with DigitalOcean, rather than a 2.3, you'll move up to a variable clock that runs between 2.5 and 3.9. Nine. So um, out of all of them, I think uh, the Intel Xeon from Vulture, the 3.8 high frequency one is still the quickest one I've seen in the benchmark so far. I'll make a video um, coming up where I'll, I'll do a lot of benchmarking, but today we'll just focus on DigitalOcean and we'll set up a basic $5 one just to see the process. Now there are free trials for both of these in the description. For Vulture, you'll get 30 days of credit for free and DigitalOcean, you'll get 60 days for free. So you can follow along and try this method out for yourself. Now I have done a Vulture tutorial in the past as well using Plesk. Now that is over there. I'll link to that one in the description too, the Vulture WordPress setup. I kind of like this method as well. I'll do some things a little bit differently on the DigitalOcean setup so you can compare different ways of doing things and learn more about using Plesk. Now in this tutorial and the previous Vulture tutorial, we use free SSL to set up our website. Now there's two good options for doing this. Today we're gonna to be using Let's Encrypt SSL. Previously we used Cloudflare SSL. Now I'll go through a little bit about the differences between these. Uh, Let's Encrypt is free. You've got automatic setup in many cases and you can use any DNS host. Cloudflare is slightly faster and it's also free, but you do need to use Cloudflare DNS. So I kind of prefer the Cloudflare method, but I do use this one sometimes as well. I think some people have preferences either way. Um, so that's why I'm gonna make a Let's Encrypt method today. And if you wanna see the Cloudflare method, check out that Vulture tutorial. Uh, again, I don't have a strong preference, maybe a slight preference to Cloudflare, but um, either way is good. And I'm gonna use uh, this one today. So let's get going. I should also mention it's not important which one you choose. You can use Let's Encrypt or Cloudflare on DigitalOcean. You can use Let's Encrypt or Cloudflare on Vulture. That doesn't matter. You can mix and match between these tutorials. So the goal is just to learn more and decide what is suitable for your project. So once you head over to that link in the description on DigitalOcean, you'll see that you've got your free credit active. So you've got $100 to use within 60 days. So just fill that out, activate your account and go ahead and log in. So let's get going. First time you log into your DigitalOcean account, you can create a droplet with the get started with the droplet button here. You can also do it up here. They've got a create droplet button there. Either way is cool. That takes us to our next screen. Now we want to set up a Plesk droplet. So we go to marketplace, type Plesk into our search bar and we are looking for Plesk on Ubuntu. So just choose that one from the drop down, and then we go with a basic CPU and here we can choose our pricing. So like I said earlier, the premium Intel, $6 a month with the NVMe, that is great value. There's also AMD, which also costs $6, but from what I could see so far, the Intel was slightly better and Regular Intel for $5 is the cheapest option. So if you're on a tight budget, let's do this one and then let's choose our data center location. Just choose something that's closest to your audience. In this case, I'm gonna go with New York. It is defaulted to number three there. I don't think it matters, but I'll just go with the default number three center. So that is on default New York number three and we can leave this stuff blank. Authentication, we can use a root password and here we make up a nice, strong, long, complex password. So I'll paste one in here. There we go, that's all done. Make sure you keep that password in a safe place. Alternatively, you can use an SSH key if you like using SSH keys. I won't go through that now, but I'll put a link in the description if you wanna learn more about SSH keys. But a good root password should be just fine and it's quite a convenient solution. It's worth giving your host name a more descriptive name than this random one that they've generated. So I'm just gonna call that Plesk Idea Spot Tutorial. And then we can just go ahead and click create. So now we'll see our progress bar as our droplet is getting created. So just be patient while this droplet sets itself up. So this is almost done here. So just be patient. That looks like it's all done now. So let's check out our droplet here. Let's go ahead and click it. 
From here we can see we've got an IP address and some basic info about the bandwidth and CPU usage. So now we can go ahead and try logging into Plesk. So I'm just gonna copy that IP address there. Let's make a new tab and let's go to that IP address. So this is our Plesk web server default page. We can go ahead and log into Plesk there. First time we do it, we'll get a security message. We just click advanced and then we go ahead and proceed. This will depend on the browser, but later on we're gonna set up the SSL certificate so we can have secure login later on. And here we can go ahead and log in as root and use the root password when we set up the droplet. So I've just popped those in there, root and the password, and we can log in. It's gonna prompt you for a username and password. So I'm gonna pop in uh, your details there and we can go ahead and generate another password for admin. So that will make an admin account with the password there. Click confirm and then enter Plesk. Now it's gonna go through the setting up process. So this does take a while. So just wait for the setup to complete. So after about a minute, we got some progress here. It's gonna give us a welcome screen. We can just say, thanks, I know my way around and skip the intro. We get some progress down here saying it's initializing Plesk. So just let it finish up doing its thing. I'm just gonna accept the cookies here. And before we set up our domain in Plesk, I'm gonna go back to DigitalOcean and set up the domain in DigitalOcean here first. So we go to our projects, so that is in our main menu. Click on our main project here. We've got our droplet. Let's head over and we can click those three dots. I'm gonna add a domain. So here I'm gonna be using ideademo.site, but your domain name will go in there. We are pointing it to our Plesk Ideaspot tutorial droplet, and we're gonna click add. So from here, it's gonna tell us our name servers for DigitalOcean, we'll get them there, ns1digitalocean.com, ns2 and ns3. We're gonna copy those over to wherever our domain is registered. In this case, ideademo.site is registered over on GoDaddy under DNS management. So I'm gonna be using my own name servers here. You just have to go into DNS management if you're using GoDaddy or Namecheap or Google, wherever, and just change your name servers to match up with the DigitalOcean one. So I'll just change those up here. So there we go, NS1, NS2, and NS3. I'm gonna click save. We'll just click confirm and continue. So that's all good there. I've got our DigitalOcean name servers in there. If you were using Namecheap, for example, it would look like this under your DNS management. You could go ahead and add those name servers in there. Um, DigitalOcean actually has a really nice article. I'll link that in the description, but it's got uh, instructions for GoDaddy, Host, Gator, Namecheap, one and one uh, all the things you might need, and some general advice there if you don't have yours listed on the list, but um, they're all very similar. You just have to add those name servers from DigitalOcean onto your domain name. Then it's just a matter of waiting for your name to propagate across the internet. You can check the progress by going to whatsmydns.net, putting your domain name in there and hitting search. And you should see it hitting the IP that is connected to your domain. It should match up with your DigitalOcean droplet IP address, which mine is doing just fine here. It does take a while, so just be patient and wait for um, your domain to set up properly. So after an hour or so, we can actually log in using our domain now. So I'm gonna to go to ideademo.site and colon 8443. So that's on port 8443 for Plesk. And we're gonna log in to Plesk using this um, domain name now. So again, I still don't have the SSL set up. We're gonna do that just in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed on. Again, put in your root username and password and log in. Now we can go ahead and add our domain. So here we're gonna be using ideademo.site, but your domain name goes in there. It's gonna create an account for SSH and FTP. So I'm gonna call the username ideaspot, generate a nice strong password and repeat that there. I'm not gonna do the automatic SSL at this point. I'm gonna do that manually in just a second. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. So there we go, we've got our success message for the domain. And we can just click the domain there and we can go ahead to SSL certificates there. Here we're gonna choose our Let's Encrypt certificate, so get it free there. And then I'm gonna select these three options, www, webmail, and mail. I might actually add these to our DNS before we go and uh, process this. So back to our uh, digital ocean. Let's head to our domain here. And we want a record for mail, and that will go to our IP address for webmail. Again, that will go to our IP address. We'll need a CNAME record for www, and that will go to at for root and create that one. So that should be all good to go if we go back to uh, our Plesk and we've got those three ticked. Click get it free. 
So there we go. That looks all good. We've got uh, three ticks there. Those green ticks mean we are all secure on our domain. The other thing I might do is actually secure the Plesk panel itself. So let's go back to DigitalOcean and let's create an A record. I might call this one Plesk and I'll direct this to the actual Plesk panel. So I'm going to direct that to our IP. So I've got a new record there where Plesk site directs to that IP. So let's go back to Plesk and then we can go to uh, Tools and Settings and let's go to Server Settings. So what we can do here is customize our Plesk hostname. It actually generates a random Plesk page hostname for us. If you wanted to use just the random assigned one, you can copy that out and you can see I've got amazing-2. Uh, yours will be different, but you can actually go there and you can log in uh, with SSL on that one that Plesk page creates for you. So if you wanted to log in like that, totally up to you. I'm going to show you how to add your own custom branding to this hostname here. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to Plesk idea demo site and then we can go ahead and scroll down and press OK. Here it's going to say the server settings were changed. And given that we've changed the host name of the server here, we are going to go ahead and restart our Plesk. So let's head to server management under restart server there. Let's go ahead and restart the server. Now rebooting the server does take a minute or two. So just be patient and Plesk will start working after about a minute or so. So just wait a second and then we can continue. And from here, we're going to go back to SSL and TLS certificates. And we're going to go ahead and add a, another Let's Encrypt certificate for our Plesk. So let's go ahead and change that to our new Plesk host. So Plesk idea demo dot site in this case and hit renew. You may get an insecure error while this sets up. I'm just going to go through and proceed here. And there we go. We've got our success. A new Let's Encrypt certificate has been generated for Plesk idea demo dot site. So finally, if we go ahead, open a new tab. If we head over to Plesk idea demo dot site port, 8443, we should be able to log in with SSL now. So there we go. This is Plesk idea demo dot site. This is now how we're going to log in to Plesk from now on. So I'm going to accept the cookies and we can log in here just fine. So I'm going to put in my credentials there again and go ahead and log in and we should be all good. So from here, this is how we'll log into Plesk in the future at our own custom uh, control panel domain. I'm going to save that into our passwords in Chrome and looks all pretty good. You can obviously name that however you like. I just called it Plesk here for simplicity during the tutorial. Now that everything's up and running nicely, there's a few security settings I like to turn on for additional security. See, it says security can be improved here. So we click on that one and there's a few options we can turn on here. So I can turn on uh, HSTS and enable HSTS. Uh, we can keep website secured. OCSP stapling, turn that one on and we're pretty much good to go now. If we head over to websites and domains again, here it says we are safe and sound. On the topic of security, the reason I really love Plesk for people who are starting out with their own server is all of this stuff is really well automated. So we've got automatic updates here. We've got mod security is already turned on by default. It automatically updates by its default. So that is a web application firewall. We've got IP address banning. That's DDoS protection. That's automatically set up as well. We've got the free version of Immunify AV. So you can go in there and run scans on any of your websites. That's a free um, antivirus software. You've got your backup manager there. You've got a free backup service where you can backup any websites and restore them so all that is really quite point and click simple to use if we head over to tools and settings we can go to our firewall there we can see our plesk firewalls already all set up nothing to do here this is all good head over to tools and settings again and you can go to system updates here so if you go to system updates we can see that uh, everything's up to date and this is set to automatically update as well so yeah, automatically install Plesk updates, install the third party components shipped by Plesk, system package updates. And this is all run from this, this friendly looking uh, graphic interface rather than from a command line um, like we usually see with um, a lot of VPS setups where you need to enter Linux commands from a command prompt. But this is all graphical, so it's quite easy. The only limitation obviously is we've added one domain here. The free version will let you add more domains. We can do three domains in the free version, but beyond that, you need a subscription. But I think if you're using the five or $6 plans from DigitalOcean or Vulture, uh, three is probably a good number to put on these sort of uh, small VPS anyway. So the free version is quite quite um, useful in this sort of situation. All right, now let's go ahead and install WordPress on here. So we've got our option there in the menu. We can go ahead and click install. 
this will give us our options. So HTTPS idea demo dot site. We can give it a title here. I'm going to call that uh, idea spot tutorial. Uh, no plugins or themes. We can do that in WordPress itself. Uh, we've got the latest version of WordPress there. We're going to use English. Set up a username and a password there and an admin email. We can actually do automatic updates on the server side here. So yes, WordPress. I might do yes, all major and minor, but you can do just minor security updates as well. We can automatically update plugins and themes as well if you like. So let's go ahead and install. Going to save my password there and you'll see your progress indicator down on the bottom right there it'll ask us if we want to set plugins up right now we can just say no thanks and there wordpress was installed one thing i like to do here is we've got the option of nginx caching here so we can turn that on that is server caching for uh, wordpress server side caching so this is a really quite fast way of um, implementing wordpress without having to use a caching plugin on the actual website it does it server side which is quite simple and fast I noticed the first time you always uh, get this security warning saying fix security. If we click on that and just recheck the security, I think when it is installing uh, before it applies all the permissions, it gives you that warning. But after you just run that check again, we should be all good. So yeah, we're all good again. That warning's gone. Now, if we head over to ideademo.site, we can see we've got our WordPress installed. We've got our SSL padlock. We're all sweet. We're ready to go. If we just add slash wp-admin up there, we can get to our login screen. Our login and password is going to be the same that we use when we set up the Plesk install of WordPress and we can log into our dash. There we go. Now, once you're logged into your WordPress dashboard, you can go ahead and set up your site under appearance and themes. Go ahead and install a theme and start work. I've obviously done that in plenty, plenty of previous tutorials. So I've gone ahead and skipped ahead and set up a basic cadence website. That's probably my favorite theme at the moment for free. Um, and I've set up one of my favorite starter templates, the agency one here. So this is what I've got set up. Let's run a few speed tests and see how it's working. So just running this through Google PageSpeed Insights, it should do fairly well. It's a very very lean setup and I've done a few optimizations to it to see how well it's going to run. So I'm getting a pretty good score in Google PageSpeed Insights and 97 in mobile and desktop 95. So doing pretty good. I haven't done a lot in the way of optimization. I've only put Imagify and Auto Optimize. So I'm just compressing the images, optimizing the scripts and I don't have any real um, bulky plugins here just have cadence started templates and cadence blocks so a very simple site and uh, obviously performing really well considering how light and well optimized this theme is the other things you'll need to do is set up your email so i've got a few email tutorials i've done already you'll definitely want the smtp set up so you get your wordpress notifications emailing properly so definitely check that one out and you can get a free email box for your domain either using gmail or using zoho so i'll link to these in the description as well so get email set up it's not good to run uh, email on a small five dollar vps along with your website you want to keep those separate and um, it's good to just use a professional service like one of these things and um, a dedicated smtp for your notifications so you want to set those up as well all right now from here you probably want to check out my video on wordpress optimizations just i'll go through more details about how i did the auto optimize and the imagify i'll pop that that video up there. I'll also pop my Vulture tutorial there. So check that one out as well. See which one you prefer. I do kind of slightly prefer the Vulture method and I do prefer spending the extra $1 to get that extra performance from the CPU and the um, NVMe drive that you get with Vulture. So check that Vulture tutorial out as well. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.